Hey, so this is the beginning of a new vlog. However, this segment of this vlog I am going to put at the end of the video um, for obvious reasons. This is a very, very serious topic. This is... I couldn't even decide whether I wanted this topic to be one full video. Uh, but I just felt that if I make it that way, it's going to be too much. It's going to be too much to handle in one moment, um, in one sitting. So I wanted to have a little bit of joy in this video, but also not take away from my responsibility, not only as a content creator, not only as a um, <laughs> female, but also as a black female. The world is a mess right now. The world has been a mess for over 12 days now. And I feel like the one moment that catapulted the world into this downward spiral is of course the death of George Floyd. Um, wow, where do we even start? Being a black female in South Africa, not only have I been exposed to racism, not only have I been exposed to bully, bullies, not only have I been exposed to police brutality, I've also been exposed to just gender-based violence. This is what makes my part of the story very, very um, heavy. Because in our country, we don't only suffer from racism as black people, as marginalized people. We suffer from gender-based violence as a black female, and we also suffer from police brutality. Police brutality is not a new thing in this country. However, I feel that the death of George Floyd has catapulted the world into a spin where we are forced to listen. We are forced to watch, we are forced to mute ourselves, which is what the point of last week was for me. We are forced to mute ourselves, listen, read, learn, and hopefully grow from it. The reality of the situation is that black people are not seen as people, and this is throughout the world. The reason why I say this, I hate to group everybody into one category where we, where I say that everybody doesn't see black people as people, but the reality of the situation is right now the focus is on black lives. The focus has been on all lives and and, and people trying to take away this moment from us when in actual fact we have been born into a society that systematically <sighs> binds us and, and binds us as black people to not progress and not to move forward. You might not like what I am saying right now, but you must listen. And if you choose not to listen, then this is not the platform for you to be following my subs following my channel, following you know my social media content, because I am one of those content creators that is going to speak about this, whether you like it or not. George Floyd catapulted us to look at all the other all the other cases of police brutality, not only all over the world, but as a South African, I had to look at other cases of police brutality within the country. And it is very sad that it had to take an international movement uh, based on the death of George Floyd to actually also make me look into what has been happening within my country in a deeper light. It was painful. We grew up with racism. We grew up with police brutality, where we as black people have been conditioned by our families, by our parents, by our grandmothers, grandfathers, to be careful, to be careful of what we say, to be careful of just don't walk down the street late at night, more especially as a woman, especially in this country. Um, it just, everything meshes in together, they all bind themselves together, more especially for me as a South African woman. 
and we've been conditioned by our parents, grandparents, to be careful what we say, to watch what we say, to be respectful of uh, uh, officers of the law, to be respectful of, I hate to say it, white people. It is only growing older where I have realized that there's, there's just so much inequality to what I am saying, to, what, to, to the words that are coming out of my mouth. There's so much unfairness uh, that we have to grow up in a society, in a, in a race in which we are taught to be careful right from the moment that we e exit the womb and to the moment that we really die, really. And to see what has happened I'm, I've, I've done what I needed to do and what I continue to do on social media by sharing and posting and speaking about my experiences on my Instagram stories. However, I just feel like it is not enough. And while we are in this point, in this place where we have the world listening to the one statement that Black Lives Matter, this is the moment where we act. This is the moment where we scream. This is the moment where we shout. <sighs> I don't even know where to start. There's just so much going on in my head right now. And I feel like this is the moment where not only do we need to listen, but we also need to grow from this. We also need to impact change. And as somebody who has the social media platform, I feel like I would be doing myself and black people an injustice by not saying anything. Racism is not new in South Africa. We come from a time, our parents, our grandparents, apartheid was a defining moment of South African history. And not only did it end in 1994, however, it still continues it still continues every single day. It continues every single time you walk into a meeting at work and white people stare at you differently. It continues every time you hear the news and you have women like Penny Sparrow calling black people in this country, black officers in this country by the K word, which is just as good as saying the N word in the States. It's a reality. It's our reality in this country. What makes it worse is that you, it, it becomes even more bitter when you are black and you are female. You can't, it's, 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 it's an unavoidable part of your life. I've experienced so many cases of racism, just myself, that I can sit down and do a video on and they are terrifying from my neighbors, from, from, from just women that you meet on the street, from, uh, from people that you meet on the street, from just every single moment of your life. And it's funny how with the death of George Floyd, it just called me into remembering how terrified I am of the police. I once had an encounter with the police whereby I was terrified for my life. I wasn't terrified because uh, I might get arrested. I was terrified that I might get arrested, but at, at the same time, being a black female, I was also terrified that I might get raped or might get killed. So black people, our lives do matter. That's why we're here. I'm Don't say things like all lives matter. Right now is not that time. Right now is not that time because if you say to me all lives matter, you're including my life. But as a black person, I don't feel like my life matters. So you must be forced to listen. You must be forced to try and understand as someone who is not black why we say things like this. Why we say we mention statements like black lives matter. I'm shaking. At my core, I'm shaking. Uh, because we remember. We remember the Petrus Michels, we remember the Colin Causas, we remember the Spusiso Amos, we remember all of the people who died, some cases in their homes, at the hands of the police. 
In South Africa, there's over 6,000 cases yearly that are uh, reported of police brutality. It isn't new. If you'd like me to do a video about my experiences or if you'd like me to do a video where I delve in deeper into this because it is quite upsetting, let me know and I'll do that. But for now, I'm going to leave it here and thank everybody who's been standing up for the Black Lives Matter movement. Do not say that because it happened in the U.S., that we, why are we all jumping onto the bandwagon? We know this, we've lived this, this is experience. It is not a story that we are deciding to jump on because a life was lost. These are experiences, our experiences. Yeah, that's why I'll leave it for now. All right. Okay, hey everybody. Um, as you can see, it is nighttime. Got my lights on in the house. I am in my kitchen. I am going to be cooking. Um, uh, this is going to be like an evening, afternoon, evening vlog because you guys know I'm already back at work. So I am not um, going to be able to vlog during the day because there's nothing really exciting to show you guys about my life at work. Time without wanting to make the vlog very somber. I thought, you know what, let's mix in a little bit of everything. Um, I of course, do a cooking vlog because I haven't done that in quite a bit. I'm going to cook some dinner right now. I'm actually drinking a green smoothie right now. It's not really a smoothie. It's more like a green juice. It's very light because it's just um, orange juice and spinach. Today, because I needed to pick up a couple of things for what I'm cooking today in particular, I was feeling very uh, stir fry -ish or bowl-ish, you know, uh, Asian bowls. So I needed to pick up a couple of things. I cannot decide between a um, stir fry, you know, Asian style with uh, beef strips or if I should make an Asian inspired bowl uh, with vegetables. And I think that's the route I'm going to take. So this is going to be a tad bit messy, but add in the beef. I've just rinsed out all the blood, guts, and gore. <laughs> just add it to the dish, like so. Next, we are going to season. So I've got some sesame oil here and barbecue spice. Um, of course, salt and pepper, which is a standard, which is what we can actually start with. Little bit of just ground cumin. And I'll just close this up before we have a mess on our hands. You'll be surprised about this, but adding an egg to your meat sort of binds everything together and seals all the spices in together. So it just yeah makes it look a little bit sloppy and slimy, but you go with it. A uh, deep set pan this you can use a pot as well it's fine it's all up to you I'm going to add some rice this is brown rice I just sort of wing it as well this should be enough for dinner and enough for lunch tomorrow so I just sort of wing that and then we put it on the stove as you can see all right so we're gonna chop up some pepper here um, this pepper is going to go into the, the mix of the julienne vegetables. Right. Along with that, I'm going to add these have already been pre-washed because of course they've been cut up so I'm going to add all of this into the stir fry or the Asian the beef and the mm -hmm. okay so I was on a 
call but okay so i just added some sesame um, seed oil to the pan and once it heats up a little bit you need it nice and hot then i'm going to add the meat and then on this end right here the rice is busy cooking away um one thing that I did forget to add to the meat is the corn flour, which the meat is right here. So I'm going to add this in there now. going to chop these up and then add these to the julienne mushrooms <laughs> the julienne mushrooms the julienne vegetables and now what we're going to add is some teriyaki sauce which is pretty much the start of the show really here and it was pretty much finished because there's nothing i cook more with than teriyaki sauce and i'm just going to add some green onions to this That's just the marinade that I'm adding there. A little bit of oyster sauce that I added there. Ah, it smells amazing. Okay, so in this pan, this is where we're going to, it's getting hot. This is where we're gonna saute the vegetables. Okay, so for that, normally to saute vegetables, I use coconut oil instead of the pure sesame seed oil. salt and pepper to season, to taste. Thank you.